In 1811, eccentric British explorer Thomas Manning reached the mysterious city of Lhasa, high up in Tibet. Even though he traveled in the skies, it was a risky route to take. In those days, lofty Lhasa was closed to visitors. If Manning had been spotted, he'd probably have been killed. Did Manning thank his lucky stars for making it in one piece? Did he heck? He was much too busy moaning. There he is. Thomas Manning. Young Thomas was brilliant at lessons. He got top marks in Latin, Greek, and maths and went to Cambridge University when he learned Chinese. What a clever clogs. But Tom wasn't a ghastly goody-goody always sucking up to his teachers. He never took anything seriously and was always cracking corny jokes. There he is, cracking a joke. Manning was desperate to go to China to see the place for himself. Trouble is, foreigners were banned from China, so he needed, to, needed a very good excuse to get in. Guess what he did? He went off to study medicine so he could work as a doctor. Doctors and scientists in general were highly respected in China. He also wore long, chi long Chinese robes and grew a long beard. Manning reckoned the beard would make him look rather dashing, though none of his friends agreed. At first, Manning tried to reach China by sea, but his ship was turned back. So he decided to take a riskier, more roundabout route. He'd start off in India, head over the Himalayas to tip into Tibet, then try to make his way from there into China. Brilliant, huh? There was just one small problem with Manning's foolproof plan. He wasn't at all intrepid. Not the teensiest little bit. Okay, so he desperately wanted to go to China, but he absolutely hated traveling. And he never stopped moaning about it. Here's how Marty Manning might have described his journey in his letters home to a friend. Summer 1811, Calcutta, India. My dearest friend Charles, I am just leaving Calcutta in India. Goodness knows where I'll end up. Oh, well, I reckon it's only another 5,000 kilometers to go until I reach China. Depressing, isn't it? I must say, Charles, this exploring lark isn't all it's cracked up to be. Why, oh why, didn't I listen to you and stay at home? I'll try to write again soon, if I live that long, that is. Wish I was there, from Tom. P.S. The beard is coming along nicely, by the way. It's almost down to my knees. Mid-November 1811, Gyansi, Tibet. Dear Charles, I am here in Tibet and things are going well. Who am I kidding? It was an awful journey. A few weeks after leaving Calcutta, I reached Bhutan, a tiny Himalayan kingdom, and the start of those murderous mountains. <sighs> Since then, it's been uphill all the way. No wonder I collapsed with exhaustion. Thank goodness for my recipe for stewed turnips. What a nourishing dish when you're ill. And my poor feet are killing me. The weather's been terrible. It did nothing but rain for days on end and I got wet through. I am so miserable. Anyway, I finally reached Farid Song Fort, just over the border in Tibet. I was looking forward to a good rest, but a local bigwig turned up out of the blue and I got turfed out of my nice comfy bed. Typical. The last leg of the journey to Gyanse was ghastly. My horse got spooked and bolted. Thank goodness a herd of yaks got in the way and stopped it in its tracks. Otherwise, I'd be a goner. I want to go home. From Tom. P.S. I've had to stop sleeping in my clothes. They're full of flipping fleas. 
hopping mad. I'm furious. December 1811. Lhasa, Tibet. Dear Charles, Lhasa at last. But more of that later. Getting here has been a nightmare. I have never been so cold in my life. Even in my new sheepskin coat and hat, it was so chilly that icicles grew on my beard. Crossing the mountains was murder. The paths were so icy that one false step and you'd plummet to your doom. If I ever make it back home, I never want to see a miserable mountain again. Not even a horrible hill. As we approached Lhasa, I must confess I had, a high, I had high hopes of the place. I even cracked a few jokes, which I haven't done for ages. But my hopes were quickly dashed. What a grim, gloomy place this is. I am so disappointed. And after I've come all this way, I'm sorry, Charles. I'm too depressed to write anymore. See you soon, I hope. From Tom. Homeward Bound After all that, Manning never made it to China. His request was sent to the Chinese emperor, but it was turned down. Worse still, the city authorities guessed Manning was an imposter. Even though they couldn't prove it, his every move was watched. At least he was able to make his living as a doctor. Until a patient died, that is. Then he had to sell his spare clothes to make ends meet. At last, in April of 1812, Manning was allowed to leave Lhasa and return to England. So what do you think he did next? Did he A. Write a book about his trip? B. Write a book about beards? Or C. Write a joke book? The answer is C. Manning never bothered to write out the diary he kept on his trip to Lhasa. In fact, no one knew it even existed until years after his death. Instead, he wrote a brilliant book of corny jokes. Have you heard the one about the moaning Minnie with the beard down to his knees? Apart from a holiday to in Italy, Manning never traveled again. But that did not stop him moaning. And in case all his wi winging, winging is starting to get you down, let's move swiftly on. Our next intrepid explorer could not wait to hit the road.